This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Watching the Super Bowl gave me a lot of thoughts when it comes to the Cleveland Browns. A lot of thoughts about where the Browns are defensively. I look at that Chiefs defense and think to myself, this is a Browns defense that is more than capable of doing the same things that that Kansas City Chiefs defense is capable of. We have a tight end that's capable of doing some of the things that we saw at their tight ends. We have edge rushers uh, in Miles Garrett, who's capable of doing what Chris Jones does at a higher level. I look at that Chiefs team and think, why not us? But then it comes down to the quarterback position, right? That is the difference. Now, look, Deshaun Watson is not going to be Pat Mahomes. It's ridiculous, <laughs> okay? Pat Mahomes is the greatest quarterback I've ever seen in my life when it comes to talent and just raw peak performance. Nobody touches him, in my opinion. But what is interesting is that final play of the Super Bowl. And I don't know about y'all, but it felt super familiar to the final play of a different championship game that I saw, right? You see this final play from the Super Bowl and you think, oh, wow. And then you watch this final play from the 2017 championship game and you go, oh, oh, wow. Right. And that got me to think about that 2017 Clemson team, the 2016-17 Clemson team. And that made me think about the fact that Mike Williams is going to be available more than likely due to being a cap casualty. And the same might be true for Hunter Renfro this offseason. And the question is, could they bring the band back together? I look at this Brown season, and forgive me for those of you who do not partake in Star Wars, this analogy will not make much sense. But I look at this Brown season as similar to where Star Wars was at after episode eight released, right? Episode 7, The Force Awakens, was a very nostalgic Star Wars. If you loved Episode 4, you liked Episode 7. It was pretty similar, hit the same beats, made you feel similar things as Episode 4. It was a play for nostalgia, Episode 7 of Star Wars was. And that made sense at the time, right? It was the first time in a while we got a Star Wars movie. It was practical effects. People were excited. And it made sense for the time to go back to what we liked about Star Wars because the prequels had left such a bad taste in so many people's mouths. Then episode eight was divisive because to some people, Star Wars episode eight was a move in a bold direction, a move that said no more nostalgia, we're doing something new. And to some people, Specifically, people who enjoyed episode seven, enjoyed the nostalgia and the familiarity of episode seven, saw episode eight as a spit in the face of everything that they believed in, everything that they wanted Star Wars to be, right? And the Browns are in a similar place with Deshaun Watson. There are some people who want the Browns to go back to what Deshaun used to do. Go back to the original. Let's just do what he did in Clemson and bring around the same people that he had in Clemson and surround. Let's get Dabo Sweeney. Hell, like, let, let's get the same offensive coordinator from Houston. Let's just go back to what we know used to work. And there are some Browns fans that go, no, I think Deshaun Watson can be good. Let's go in a bold new direction with them. Let's do what these new teams are doing. And I think... What you don't want to have happen, and I think both camps can agree with this, and if you are a Star Wars fan, you would agree with this. You don't want an episode nine. And what an episode nine is, is a movie that is a bland, weird, compromised 
compromise, right? Where it's like, okay, you're going to bring the emperor back because you need nostalgia, and then you're going to try to patch these parts together. And then you're basically going to make me feel like I wasted my time watching all of these movies because this last one just don't make no damn sense. You don't want an episode nine season, right? You want the Browns to go in one direction or the other. Because if you go back to what worked in 2020, you'll, you'll get some success out of that. If you go in a bold new direction, you might not get the level of success that you had in 2020. But that's not guaranteed either way. But I do think there's a better chance that you get even more out of Deshaun Watson going forward than what you might have. This is where they're at. What is comfortable always feels better in the moment, Right? Because you're comfortable with it already. You don't have to waste time getting comfortable with the ideal of something before it even happens. We all prefer things that are just a bit more familiar. Right? And I think that was one of the big issues with the offense. Kevin Stefanski, a bit more familiar with the Kubiak style. A bit more familiar with quarterbacks who play like Joe Flacco and Kirk Cousins. Not necessarily quarterbacks who play like Deshaun Watson. If you want to know what one of Kyle Shanahan's biggest flaws is, to me, he's too familiar with only one style of quarterback play and has never taken the steps to get comfortable with a different style of quarterback play that could eventually get him over the hump of a Super Bowl. But he always runs up against that quarterback hump, right? Uh, he coaches the hell out of Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan gets MVP behind his offense. But, oh, no, it's Matt Ryan, dog. That's Tom Brady. You're not winning that. Or he does a great job with Jimmy Garoppolo, gets him to the Super Bowl, and boom, hits his head on that ceiling again. That's Tom Brady, dog. It's not happening. Not being Tom with Jimmy G. It's not happening. Absolutely not. Um and then this year, Brock Purdy, probably the best one he's had, a little bit of a playmaker, still hit that head on that Pat Mahomes ceiling. Look, we might look at Kyle Shanahan as the best coach to never win a Super Bowl, but the reason he hasn't won a Super Bowl is because he got too comfortable with one style of quarterback play. And this is Kevin Stefanski's chance to do what Andy Reid did, right? Andy Reid was somebody who was comfortable with quarterbacks playing a certain type of way and then he got pat you know all of a sudden his preference went away from alex smith once he got pat mahomes because he was willing to let that man make some plays now again andy reed never reversed somebody like that he also had brett Favre back in the day so it's not a one-to-one comp but you see what i mean it's easy to fall back to what you're comfortable with that's always going to feel like a great option what you're comfortable with but sometimes what you're uncomfortable with what is new in the long run ends up being the better direction to go. Case in point, that new trilogy of Star Wars. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all, this is going to be a movie channel too today. Um, but case in point, that trilogy with Star Wars, right? Ended up being very forgetful. For even those who like some of most of the movies, ended up being a forgetful trilogy. Why? Because one of the movies that was good, Episode 7, was a throwback. And it, while it's good, it just reminds you of Episode 4. So most of the time you talk about it, you're talking about Episode 4. Episode 8 was cool, but they never followed up and did anything meaningful with stuff that they did in Episode 8. So kind of just feels forgettable at the end of the day. Yes, there are moments you remember, but you don't remember that trilogy like you remember the original or even the sequel, the prequel trilogy. It's kind of this redheaded stepchild of the Star Trek universe and Star, I mean that Star Trek, Star Wars universe and Star Wars hasn't been as popular since those movies has come out. They had a chance to go in a bold new direction. I think if they would have followed that bold new direction and built off of that bold new direction, whether people liked it or not, I think episode nine would have been better and the trilogy itself would have been much more rememberable because of it. But now, it's just kind of the forgotten trilogy, isn't it? Going forward, being uncomfortable, it's, it's, it's not something that everybody wants to do. It's not something that everybody looks forward to doing, but it is what it does. You go back five years in this channel, this set looks different. My hair looks different. How I talk is different. Even how I dress is different. All changes. That at first I was a little uncomfortable with. But in order to grow, you have to be willing to step past that comfort. If you look at Deshaun Watson, 
The answer is not dis- nostalgia. Do you want a receiver like Mike Williams? Yes. Do you want Mike Williams? I don't know. Hunter Renfro seems kind of redundant to me. You already have Elijah Moore. But you do want pieces that fit around it, right? I think there's a nice balance that you can hit. Yeah, Mike Williams worked with Deshaun Watson in college, but Mike Williams is not the guy that he was in college anymore. He's had ACL injuries, injuries along the way. Who knows what his separation is looking like? And he was never that great of a separator to begin with. But you can use Mike Williams as a template to evolve off of. Because maybe you see Leggett as Xavier Leggett as somebody who could be kind of like Mike Williams. Or maybe you think Michael Pittman is worth the investment there. Or maybe you can luck in again Mike Evans for a one year deal. You could fit the template, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the nostalgia name right or it doesn't have to follow the template one-to-one you can add some different things on it and see if Deshaun Watson can do some different things differently I got a comment um, a couple weeks ago asking why do I think why is it that Baker the thing that people got tired with Baker was you, you needed everything to be great around him to be successful and is that not what we're talking about the same thing being for Deshaun and to a point I agree you should not have to have a great offensive line and a great wide receiver room to get a true evaluation of Deshaun Watson. All I really need for Deshaun Watson is him to stay healthy for me to have an evaluation of him. Whether he gets another wide receiver or not, the Browns currently as constructed have enough for you to get an evaluation off of him. Also, I feel like we talk about the 2023 season as if it's a different season than what we all saw. Was Deshaun Watson lights out in that season? No. But he was, at the very least, better than average. Sometimes people talk about what he did in 2023 as if he was objectively bad. He was not objectively bad. He was objectively bad in one game. He was good in all the others. And in a couple of those games, he was great. He didn't put up the numbers that people were expecting. But he also didn't play the amount of games that people expected him to play. So we'll see what happens if he gets consecutive games together. I think if he played that second half of the season, he would have had a big se- big second half. He would have put up some of those numbers. Um, and maybe we're not talking about this as much. Or maybe he loses in the first round of that playoff game, and we're talking about this a lot. Either way, the answer for Deshaun Watson can't be looking to the past at everything. You can look to the past for inspiration on how to evolve, but you can't stay in the past. You can't just rip out plays from 2020 in Houston and run them. You need to use those concepts as inspiration, figure out what worked for it, what was it about those plays that worked for him, and then evolve those concepts to 2024.